Hello, I'm David Wormsey. In this video, I'm going to walk through the process of creating your own Beaver Builder row shape plugins, which is quite easy to do. I've created a bunch of them and I was showing these off in the last video. I've added a few more. These are freely available, so you can take these and use these in your projects and I will be adding to them. But as I say, it's fairly easy to create these yourself. I did it and I did it from an article that's already on the Beaver Builder site here. I just thought it might be helpful to walk through how I do things so you can see this. And I speed things up a little bit by using one of the plugins that I've already made and just make a duplicate of it. So here is the BB Wavy one that I made before. It's pretty simple here. We just have this one PHP file here which registers the shape in Beaver Builder. And then we have this shapes folder where the shape is itself. And it's just a lot quicker to be able to copy this and just change some of the name formats as long as we got our shape as we need it to be. So let me go over to my dummy site where I have this wavy already on here. So we can see this in place as a bottom shape over here. And what I'm gonna do, and some people might frown upon this, is I'm going to change the shape out from the back end of this site. Reason people might frown upon it is because it could be a security hazard working in the plugin editor, but this is just a demo site of mine, so I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going into the plugin editor and it's gonna to default to the top one. I need to go into BB Wavy, select that. And from here we can see this is our main file where we register things and this is the shapes folder with our shape in it. So let's just open this up and I'll quickly comment on this shape because it's a little bit different with the shapes that I've created to what is in the default ones because generally that is one shape, one path. And what I've done here is add in some extra ones to create this kind of opacity. So we've got some inline CSS with some of these creating this effect. Let's just go over here. So we've got three paths on this and they've some opacity here in inline styling, but all of them, because one of them isn't got styling on them, all of them will adjust to our colors over here. So it's just the opacity that we're changing. So I thought I'd explain that. And also I've added, because we're adding more paths in, I decided to add a consistent format. You don't need to do this, but I thought it'd be useful to add in this FL path one, two, and three, etc. So if someone does want to style those individual paths with CSS, they've got, they know what the selector is and it keeps some consistency. So that's pretty much it. There are our three paths over here. To make this work, the key thing is that our shape must be wrapped in the G tag here rather than SVG, and that we need to give that a class of FL-shape, otherwise none of the settings in the editor will work. Okay, so that's what we've got. Let's go and find a new shape to replace this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one from online. There is this one over here, I love this. Use this quite a few times. It's got a bunch of different shapes over here. And it's pretty much like what we've got in Beaver Builder where it's got an SVG and CSS is used to style and flip these here and then you can copy it. Now I'm gonna steal, I hope this is okay with them. I will reference them their shape that they've got here. And there's three of them, it's like mine. It's got um, the opacity, it's very similar, in fact. And we can just take the HTML because we don't need the CSS. And we'll go back over to here and I'll keep what we've got in place so we can cross-reference it. So here we are. So we need to clean up a few things. We don't need the div that they've put in for the CSS. So I'm gonna take away the close in and this over here because it's not needed. As mentioned, we need to wrap ours in G, not SVG. So I need to change that. And the rest of it is pretty similar to what we have. Now, we do need to move this class of FL-shape into here. We can replace that because we don't need this data name. In fact, we don't need this either. Now, it's pretty similar to what we've got already. There are just a few things here. They've already done the styling. Now, mine was called fill opacity over here, where it's just opacity over here, but it will work the same. So I'm gonna leave that in place because it's the effect that we want. And they have actually added in at the end instead of the front, as I do it, a class which we won't be using. So I'm going to remove that from that one and remove this from 
this one and one more to remove and I'm just going to replace it with the ones that I use. Of course you don't need to do this um, but I'm just going to add it anyway. So let me just do that. I'll do it the same with all and then change the numbers. Whoops. Uh, okay. Change that to A3 and change this to A2 and just going to put a little bit of space there. Okay, I think we have this in place. So I will get rid of this. And it could do with a bit of tidying up, but I'm going to leave it as it is. Now, there is one other thing. I'm going to update this now. The view box is quite important, and that needs to be registered in the main file here to make sure that things work okay. Let me just give this a bit of a refresh so you can see it's not quite matching. So the shape has gone in here, it's flipped itself over, but it's not reaching the end here as it should do because it's just slightly different. Let's go take a look at that. So it's 1200 and 120. If I go over to the main file over here, we can see over here, we set our definitions. It was zero, zero here for the coordinates over here. So I just need to change this to 1200 and this to 120 and save this we'll go and refresh and it should stretch to the end now yay okay so we are actually done let's just go into here and just make sure that this is all flipping over correctly um let's just change that change the orientation around things seem to be working fine the colors working yes just the same as they are here everything else is working as it should so we've done it the shape is fine working as it is here so what i'm going to do now is to turn this into a plugin so i'll go back to my shape here because i'm going to need to grab this as it is and we'll just get this out of the way right there's my plugin i'm going to copy this and this will be quicker for changing the names for this because I'm just going to call this Wavy2 and we'll go in here and we'll change this to Wavy2 as well. Um, I'm getting a little bit blind. I can't see the dot. I'm going to our shape and we'll also call this Wavy2 as well. Okay, let's go in to the shape and open that up. And we can just, we know everything is correct here. I should have tidied it up, but I won't at the moment. I'll do that later. And we'll just swap this out. I'm using Note++ to do that so I can see how things kind of look. That's fine. That's ready. So now we just need to change some of the things here. Now, in my article that I'm going to publish. I've just got this quick reference for where you need to change things. So that might be handy, but that's what we're going to change here in the main file. So we know already that we need to change this bit here. So we need to get rid of that eight and turn that into a zero. And we need to change that to 120. We know that bit. Now we need to just change our the naming conventions. So I want the plugin to register under the plugin section as wavy2 like that and what we need to do is to change this in various different places so this is our function name and it needs to be unique in all cases so each shape needs to have a different one and i'm going to just do that by simply putting two on here these need to be underscores rather than dashes to work and i'm going to take the whole thing here because it's needed here and it's already shown me that it's needed here as well where we're adding the action. So these need to be consistent there. We also need to go and change the path now that we've changed to our artwork, our shape. So it was in the shape folder and I've changed it now to wavy2. So I need to reference that over there. And what else do I need to change? We need to change the label. So this is what we're going to see when we're selecting from the drop down on our shapes when we're in the Beaver Builder editor. So I'm gonna put a space between there and not quite sure what this name is needed for but I'm going to just put two on there and that is done we just need to save that and then we've got a new plugin all we need to do then is to use something to zip that plugin 
and we'll now be able to upload that and use that. I could show you that, but I think I'll just be wasting your time. It, it will work, uh, trust me. So there we are. That's how we move in our new shape there. So let me just talk a little bit about getting other shapes. So we, I did share this on the last video. I have borrowed some of these shapes here. There's a pack. So if you find things like this, you can just take these, download this and take the SVG files out of those and adapt them as I've just done. There is this, which I haven't actually tried to use, but I think, you know, this is creating its own paths for you. It's pretty kind of cool, this, I think. So you can just grab the path here. I mean, it's including some inline CSS here, which you can just take out, but it's an easy way of giving the path. Haven't tried it yet, so I might try a few with that later. What I wanted to just quickly cover is if you wanted to make your own shapes and you don't have something like Illustrator or Affinity Designer, which I have, there is a free alternative which is mentioned by the, in the Beaver Builder documentation, which is Inkscape. So this is open source uh, program which you can use to create your own uh, shapes. And I'm just going to quickly cover that. So I'm going to make one with that. Let me just bring this over. So I've downloaded it and I've made some shapes here because I haven't got the time to just go through this. So I'm not particularly good at using this, but it's pretty easy. You can just set your canvas to what you want. I set it to the kind of sizes that we might want for rows and you can use like kind of bezier tools here to kind of make your I'm absolutely hopeless when it comes to making these kind of shapes uh, with the bezier tool but you've also got a free hand tool as well uh, let's just go uh, where you can kind of set the smooth in as well so you can kind of make your own shapes so I managed to make a shape over here let me just I think I'll just go back a couple on this to get rid of this and let me just get this. So you can kind of alter these things as I've been able to do it. I've created one shape and I've just overlapped them over here. And I don't need to worry, these shapes are made up of fills and strokes. This has got the strokes on it, no fills on it, so they're just transparent. I'm not gonna worry about that because once I've saved this, I'm gonna change it when I add it to my shapes and, and let uh, the fill be set by Beaver Builder itself. So I've already saved this shape and I save them out so they open up as in Chrome for me. So let's go to the shape. Let me just um, go over. Oops, I've just lost it on my other screen. I'll bring back. My browser there we are so I've opened this up over here and from here I can just go and view the source and this is what is kicked out um, by Inkscape so we've got an awful lot of stuff here that we don't need what we do need is the view box information over here and the rest we can ignore until we get to the actual paths themselves as you can see here which it's quite handy because it's also within those G tags over here. So I'm going to just copy that now. We'll go back over to our plugin. Again, I will just stick this in here. And we did need the view box. Did I call it viewport? Apologies if I did. Um, information. Where did I? Over here. So these last two I want. The rest are zeros. And we'll go back to our plugin. And just for now, I'm just going to put this over here. So that should be right. I need to put a space in between that zero. OK, so great. That's what we need here. I'm going to copy this because we don't need this stuff. We don't need these, uh, layers here. And we don't we can just get rid of this and swap this with this because that's what we really need on the top there. So good, we've got our paths here. We've still got a little bit of jump that we don't want and that's the kind of inline styling that we might want. Now we might want the opacity here for these paths because that's the effect that we've been using here. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just get rid of the strokes here which are set to black and the fill to none. And I'm just going to leave the styling there and I will copy these over to the others. And then I'm going to have to kind of make this up a bit because I'm not quite sure how this will look. So I'm going to swap this over and then I'll set the opacity to different ones on these. So we'll leave that one as a, the first one as opacity one. I will set this one down to 
five and the next one down to point four and the last one to point three okay and then we still got some junk that we don't want in here we don't want the paths that we've got here and this and we would want to be swapping those out again for the ones that we've got here but just for this purpose just to save you and your sanity I'm not going to make you watch me put those in because I can just show you still the effect as it is I think everything is in there so we're minus our FL path selectors but everything else should be correct ah there is one thing we need to do before this is going to look good we need to make sure that we take this and put this in our main file over here let me just copy this over and there we'll update we'll go over and we'll give this a refresh and it should be my shape there we are ah so that didn't work out that that wasn't too bad that took the no opacity so that's been well all of it's been styled by our settings there seems to be some distance away but i think i probably need to just adjust some things over here to get this to stick to we'll go to the top center here so there we are so i just created my own shape so i i think that's really all i need to cover here probably went on a little bit too long so apologies for that hope this was useful if it was then please give me a thumbs up on youtube and share this content if you like and consider subscribing to the channel hope to see you in uh, another video hope you have a really nice day talk to you soon Bye bye